Greetings, everyone. My name is Randall Shepard, and this is the Future World Cons Q&A session. You may have read it in the book, but just we'll go over it again here. The first half of the session is going to start with LA in 2026, and be followed by Montreal and Tel Aviv, the 2027 bids, and then after that, Brisbane and Kampala, Uganda, who are the 28 bids. I can just tell you now that the Kampala group uh, sent their apologies the other night that they will not be able to attend. All the bids have filled out uh, FAQs, which will be posted, answers to those will be posted on the Glasgow website. So very, very common questions you may not want to ask. We'll take a break when those finish and we'll start back again at 2.30. Even though that might be a bigger gap than we thought, the people in the second half have been told the 2.30 start time, so we'll stick with that. That'll be Seattle, which is next year's Worldcon followed by the Dublin bid, followed by announcements from anybody 2030 and beyond. There are note cards up at either corner with pens. The questions will be submitted to the front table. They'll be reviewed and vetted. You're allowed to ask tough questions. You're not allowed to ask rude, mean, or insulting questions, and that's why they're vetted. Um, so I'll ask all the questions. Uh, under pain of death from con office, they need the pens back and even the unused note cards. So when you bring your note card back, there better be a pen with it <laughs> or else. With that said, I think we're ready to launch. And so without further ado, I'll introduce Joyce Lloyd, who's the chair of the LA in 2026 bid. Well, as Randy said, my name is Joyce Lloyd, and I am the chair of LA in 2026. I am actually living in LA, which is always a plus. Um, we are looking at Anaheim, California. Um, with Anaheim, California, this, the uh, time of year of August is going to be in your 80s, low 90s, um, unless it's a bad year, in which case it can be in the hundreds. But the brilliant thing is our facilities are all closely put together. I want to talk about our facilities primarily today because that's really what you're looking at beside who's running it. You want to know what you're going to be facing and, and what the facilities are going to look like. Um, our facilities, we have the Anaheim Convention Center North, which is the ACC North. We have the Anaheim Convention Center Arena, which will be our, our large venue. The Anaheim Hilton, which we have both function space and sleeping rooms. And the Anaheim Marriott, which we are only using for function uh, for sleeping rooms this year. Wow, can't read my own slides. As I stated, all of our locations are within easy access. As you can see, the bright blue, the dark blue, are actually the facilities we'll be using. The light blue is walking area, which is actually closed off to pedestrian traffic. So it is not only convenient, it is actually walkable surfaces and walkable areas. Um, the ACC North has three levels of self-contained space. It has easy access to and from the Hilton. It has an attached parking garage, and it is fully carpeted. That means every place that you are walking, whether you're in the exhibit hall, wherever you're at, you're on carpet, so it's a nice padded feel to it, and you're not going to get as tired as quickly, <laughs> especially if you're walking around or not. The ACC North, the 100 level, which is the lower level, is going to be is completely programmable space. We can move the walls. We can make them any shape or way we want them to be. And so it's great because we can have one giant room if we want it, or if we want to maybe lock down a private view, private area for a special exhibit that we have to keep under lock and key, we can have that ability. So we have a, a wonderful way now to actually departmentalize on a, an exhibit hall floor without having to, to pay for extra pipes and drapes and stuff like that. So it's, it's a nice little way of, of, of being able Able to organize. Our floor will have the dealer's room, it'll have the art show, exhibits, special exhibits, and maybe some other fun stuff. We will see. We've got a lot of space to play with. The ACC North Plaza level, that is your entry level floor. Um, there's not a lot of space. It's actually just this great, this area here. This is all open up to the under level. You can actually look through the glass here and see what's happening down on uh, the, 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 the dealer's floor. Can't talk all of a sudden. Um, but what we will have up here will be all of our early access stuff that you'll want. You'll have your registration there. You will have things like um, assistance desks, um, information desks, things that are, are convenient to be there because we can answer questions and help you out. 
Then we have the ACC North, the SEC 200 level. Again, this is fully programmable space. We can have one giant space if we want to. It's a waste because we can have up to 100,000 square foot area that is just programmable into down to, to, to minutia. And this is, this is just a layout we can do. All walls, all things are connected. So we have a lot of playroom with this. The other nice thing about this is we have outside function area space if we need it. We have the section here and the section here, and one of those sections does face Disney in the evening where you can kind of see the fireworks show possibly. <laughs> the ACC arena, that'll be where we'll be having all of our masquerades, the Hugos. Um, this is literally a giant arena. Um, you can play basketball there if we didn't load it up with tech. Um, we will have the, any special events, stuff like that. It seats up to 7,500 um, without the stage, and it will depend on the size of the stage, how much seating we lose, but it, we should be comfortably able to feed everybody for a Hugo ceremony. I included pictures of the arena because it just kind of shows you a little bit better about where the seating is and how it can function. Um, and and they, for a function like we would do, they would have seating on the floor as well, which would allow us better, better seating availability for access needs. The Anaheim Hilton, we have up to 150,000 square feet of traditional function space. Um, I also have 1,300 thir sleeping room peak nights, and those rates are 179 plus taxes and a resort fee. The space that we have in the Hilton is on multiple levels. We do have, on the ballroom level, we have a plaza ballroom, a Pacific ballroom, wrong convention, sorry. <laughs> the mezzanine level, we have small rooms uh, up to the concourse level. We're getting to the medium programming rooms. And then as we have also put on here is the pool deck on the, the Lanai deck on the pool deck level. Um, if you've ever been to uh, a past LA con, the Lanai deck is where we hold our parties. Um, what this is, is we have function, there are sleeping rooms that are actually in a, in a rectangle and they have them all open into a, a courtyard from their rooms. So you go, you actually enter the parties through the courtyard and exit the parties through the courtyard and it's just a nice meeting area out in the middle. So it becomes a great social event. Um, and we have locked in that area again this year. The Anaheim Marriott, we have 700 sleeping rooms peak nights. The Marriott pricing is a little bit different. Uh, Marriott shifted into a new pricing structure in the last two years. Um, so what we have is 189 per night for a king room, and, that, and then it's 209 per night for a standard double. Um, and and then for each additional person, it's $20, up to four people into the room. Um, they also have, obviously, taxes, and they will have a resort fee. Um, and that is our facilities. Um, we have a great uh, team behind us that is working with us. I have, uh, we have been able to place in already a, a number of our division heads. We don't have them all. Um, we are looking for area heads, and this is my, this is my pitch to everybody in the room. <laughs> we are looking for area heads, we are looking for department heads, we are looking for staff. Um, and though we have not yet won our bid, we are in hopes that we will, so please keep us in mind. And that's all I have for today. I, I put some cards on that front row of the second section if somebody wants to write a question or you can come up here and grab one. But as I, for the latecomers, all questions are vetted because we're not going to have, it's from years ago, people asking mean or insulting things. You can certainly ask very tough questions. I ask them so they can hate me, not you. Um, but tough questions will be asked. In full disclosure, I'm also on the LA bid committee, but I want to endorse the, I think the Lanai deck at, is the best party space in Worldcon history, and I've been going a long time. You'll have a fantastic time. Anybody thinking they're gonna ask you? Oh. I see you a lot. <laughs> also on the committee, so probably trying to get a PR point across here, so. <laughs> These are anonymous questions, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll take a pause for a few minutes while people forget that somebody, but. 
Joyce from an anonymous member, what are you most excited about within LA in 2026? Honestly, what I'm most excited about is getting to actually work with a lot of people I consider friends and making new friends and making new acquaintances. Um, the reason I got into running the conventions or working these conventions anyway is because I fell in love with the people that I was working with at the time. Um, and now I'm in a position where I can hire and, and have all those people that I'm falling in love with and, and have enjoyed all these years to come and help me out. And that's what I actually am looking forward to the most is, is just it's the great feeling it gives to me to be working with friends, to work with friends. That's great. You heard it, folks. Get up here and get to <laughs> work with Joyce. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Anybody else with the uh, aha? -huh. And, 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 and I'll just tell folks that, that you can ask. You don't have to wait until the, the bid is up here. If you know the future bid's getting ready to speak later in the hour, you can go ahead and read, write the question out. Just note who it's for and pass them up. Be speedier and more efficient. I wrote so fast I have bad handwriting. All right, well, <laughs> I can anonymously ask you if I can't read it, so. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't ask this. You can't. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> All right, it's, since LA is the land of celebrity, Hollywood, will you be inviting any celebrities or at least considering inviting the celebrities at we this point? We would definitely consider inviting somebody that might people that might be known in the area. It, it has been done several times before. I, I can foresee it being done again in the future. Anybody else? Oh. Uh, so you walked off the stack of cards. like a slow, painful job. <laughs> <laughs> These are great questions. These are softball questions. I know. <laughs> the opportunities to advertise the greatness of what LA Con will be. So. <laughs> what kind of activities do you think you'll run? No, this is not on the card. This is me. Like, is there oh. going to be a pros versus fan pickleball tournament? Or oh. you know? <laughs> honestly, we're so far behind. Uh, right now, we're so far out. I don't even know what we've considered. However, I have had uh, somebody come up to me and propose hungry human hippos, um, and uh, where we put people, I guess, on skateboards and you push them back and forth. I've never heard of okay. this before, but I'm fascinated by it. It's great for two kiddos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think there will be activities. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get that one out, but that one definitely did intrigue me. There was also a request for um, a bouncy castle um, and slip and slides. And I and and I just so saw the facilities guy kind of smirk <laughs> and shake his head. But anyway, so so I, I just have to kind of negotiate with my facilities division. <laughs> but you're open to out of the box thinking. That's I great. am definitely yes, out of the right. box thinking. The hungry hippos. <laughs> although, although you're two years in advance, do you, any thought that the 2028 Olympics will impact preparations for LA in 2026? No, I don't think. The only thing that might actually impact us is the 2026 World Cup, because <laughs> um, that's actually in July in LA, I think, um, that year, isn't it? Yeah. And that, might, right. that may impact. I don't know. That's, it's before the convention, though. It's so before. And that's my facilities division head, by the way, folks. Jeff, you just didn't know. <laughs> that's John Platt, the fourth. Great guy. Okay. I didn't see him. He's it's also a Kansas City Chiefs fan. And I, I know the answer to this is going to be no, but it was written. Uh, would you consider shifting the date a little later to be off season for the crowds? We want to visit Disneyland after the con is over. No. And I'll, I'll tell you, even a week later kills us because we have two things we would be up against a week later. We would have Dragon Con, but more importantly, we'd be up against Burning Man. And so I would lose not only the people who would travel in for the convention, I'd have loosed my L.A. people as well. <laughs> but 
there might be the chance of maybe a group discount for WorldCom members? Yeah, actually, traditionally, we've been able yeah. to negotiate a group discount for Disney. And in fact, um, Craig Miller found um, from his LA Con many years ago, the, the group Disney price, I think, was like $20. <laughs> now, I am not going to be able to get that. I'm just going to tell you that now. <laughs> but he had the coupon for it, and I'm like, really? It was ever that cheap? <laughs> and so, yeah. That, but, but traditionally, I, in, in 2006, we had a, a discounted as well. So it, I think it's highly likely we'll, we'll be able to. And in 84, there was a Disney day, like the day before WorldCon started. You saw lots of fans there, and it was a discounted yeah, I rate. Think it was. Yeah. I, that's before my time, Randy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I dated myself. My, I was in Disney on that. Yeah. All right. Any other questions for LA? If not, they've about hit their time limit, so I'm going to excuse them, and we can move on to the next. Thank you for your time, and please do stop by the table uh, if you want love to pre-support us. We do have the passport program. Even if you don't pre-support us, if you join us, we still have the passport program. You just don't get the cool stamps that we've already produced. Thank you. Next up, Montreal. And again, if you're thinking of any questions for future bids and aren't speaking yet, you can go ahead and hand in the cards. Okay, because I'm not a, a thing. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so I did not prepare a presentation because this is going to be extemporaneous, which I'm not terrific at. But just to say, if you came in 2009, you need to come back to Montreal because we have changed. As a living, breathing, evolving city, um, over the years we have put in, we have just initiated a new mass transit system, which by 2027 is expected to ex extend out at to the airport which is very nice, but even if you cannot take the mass transit options, aside from the bus, do be reassured that the Montreal government keeps a tight rein on the rates that you have to pay in order to get a taxi slash Uber into the city center. That is regulated. They can't charge you anything different from that. From that. And right now it's roughly under $50 Canadian. Um, I don't, well, okay. My treasury guy is not here to do the conversion for me, sorry. Um, but at, we are now at the first negotiation pass for the hotels. We're looking at 20 hotels and the configuration will be different from what was in 2009. Most, um, most visibly because 2009 we used the Delta Hotel as headquarters and it's been co converted into student dorms. So that is definitely off limits to us. Our dates are for the North American Labor Day weekend, September 2nd to the 7th, because that affords us the most availability of all the space that we want within our convention center, the Palais de Congrès, and also with our associated hotels of which we are negotiating with. Um, let me think what else was needed to cover. So great. To paraphrase one of my volunteers, great city, you need to come, you'll love it. Mm -hmm. And it has changed because what we put in since 2009 is that there is a major technical institute. We have a lot more gaming, creative AI personnel within the city. I mean, that employs somewhere around 63,000 people of which we will entice as many as we can possibly manage. Um, we've got 38 airlines who go to the airport. We have many direct non-stops from Europe and other associated cities. Uh, running through the questions. Most people will not have a problem coming to Montreal. For the Americans out there, the US Americans out there, please note your government insists that you have to have a passport in order to get back into your country. 
So that is not our fault because I've had that one many times. Um, passport cards, if you live in any of the border states, are acceptable. Um, there are a couple of countries that require ESTAs, and we will work with you like we did with the Ugandans for SMOFCON. We will generate letters of invitation as appropriate to your country for our government location closest to you and try to get you that visa. Sorry, Uganda. They made it last year to Winnipeg. Yay. But it, it's a, I, I am sad to say that it is a long, sloggy process, which is not the best out there. Uh, what else? Hotel rates right now, as I said before, we are at the first pass. And at the base rate, we're looking possibly for a standard room of one or two beds, roughly around 196 Canadian, which converts to roughly 149 US. So we will be affordable. We are extremely affordable. Um, French City, we have something around 5,300 restaurants. So you will find something that we're pretty sure that you're going to find something that you like. Um, and the reason that we are going for 27 is that in 2028, our facilities is undergoing a major renovation and extension. So the space will not be available for us for a few years because that's dependent on public funding and politics and things of which I have no influence over. Uh, and I will take questions at this point because my brain is dead. And I apologize. But um, yeah. That, All right. that is I, pretty much any, it. I don't have any cards yet, but I've got questions. So is oh, there going to be a... And also, um, we will put the Q&A up on our website afterwards. I won't go into the technical problems that I have, just to say that <clears throat> BSDOD. But yes, go, Randy. You're going to have a French language track? We will have as many different languages as we have volunteers for. What we found with 2009 is that while we had a very strong French program, most of our French fans were interested in what was happening on the English language side mm -hmm. of the program, and they went more to the English language programming than they did to the French programming. No fault of our French programming. It's just, you know, they went, hmm, what's going over there? Okay. And what's the situation like main hotels, capacity, and how close they are um, to the convention center? We have, center? in the first pass, okay, in the first pass, we have roughly 2,000 hotels under considerate, no, I misspeak, 2,000 rooms under consideration amongst 20 hotels. Now, most of the hotels are within a quarter mile, but it goes out a little bit to a half mile for some of them, but right across the street in different directions, we have the Embassy, West End, and the Intercontinental, home to the famous Absinthe Bar for anybody who went in 2009, very, very popular that we're in negotiations with. And then to the brown back of us, depending on your proclivities, there is the Holiday Inn with the Pagoda still there, and there's also a couple of new hotels that have opened on that side. Okay, and what's public transport look like? If I'm a half mile away, is there an easy transit there rail? Is, or? There is an underground, there's also the overground, but we make it very easy for people to come back and forth because you know we have that period of year where there is that four letter word, snow, Everybody who knows me knows how much I hate snow. And, but because of the underground city, you don't have to be out in it. That's, that's the um, main thing. So, yeah. And if you would like to and are interested in that four-letter word, not that it will apply in summer, because freak storms happen, um, you can go Google our Montreal snow fleet and see how we get rid of, we basically vacuum up the snow and goes away, which I am all in favor for. We have the snow fleet. I can give you boring details about how it works and how it starts with the siren trucks that tell you, move your car or else we're going to tow it. And it goes from there. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'll trust you. I'll make sure you bet um, first I was before I answer it. I was at um, 2009 Montreal. Mm -hmm. Was it anticipation? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to say, as far as Montreal con is concerned, 
one of my um, memories, well, a couple of my memories, is I had the best croissant ever in my whole life at the Pierre du Calvé, Calvé Auberge. And uh, so that's a good place to go for croissants. And um, one of the funnest ghost walking tours I'd ever been on in my life, too. So, <laughs> Just as addendum to the ghost walking tour thing, we, which is not specifically to the ghosts, but I'm just going to highlight one of the very, very cool things that the city has done in the recent past. I would, recent past being before COVID hit everybody, is that they actually took the time and effort to go around to historic places in the city. I know other cities have done this, where they film actors playing in, context, in the historical context of that location and site. And there is an app that you can um, use for that. It, it's been extended to a couple of other cities, but Montreal was one of the first cities that, t that took the time and the effort to do this. So, um, and the other addendum to that is, ask Jerry Daftshaw, because he went to Montreal before he got married and they remarked upon it. Is there any kind of capacity limit on like maximum registrations or a level where it becomes a problem nope. on crowd size nope. in the facility? <laughs> I will point out that our prime minister, God love him, dropped a 10,000 UN concerned parties um, climate summit on us in under six months. And our yes. people at the Palais handled it. They weren't thrilled about it, nobody would be but they handled it. I wasn't thrilled about it because it closed the Palais to the Smoths that were in for SmothCon, and I wanted to show off the Palais and all the different things that they had done with the interstitial bases and the art galleries that it, they had installed. There's also a vineyard and a garden that's used by the catering facilities and a operational um, beehive unit okay, out but, there. But the 10,000 But the 10,000 dropped and didn't have a problem, and we handled it. Okay. Or I should say the Palais people handled it. I wasn't part of those who handled it. I just got to watch in fascination as, because we were at the Sheraton for the SMOFCON where I got to watch because that was the security center for the entire conference and I get to watch these you know, cute uniforms go by. All right, I don't see any other movement and your 15 minutes is nearly up, so. Happy to answer anything, come see us in Hall A. And if, if you're interested in working with us, I'm sure we'll find a space for you. All right, thank you, Janie. Thank you, Randy. Next up is gonna be Tel Aviv for 2027. And again, if you have questions, you can start filling out the cards before they're done speaking. Can you hear me? Or? A little closer to the mic, but yeah, you're good. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Guy. I'm the bid chair for the Tel Aviv 2027 bid. Uh, we are bidding to bring a uh, word come to Israel to Tel Aviv for the first time. It has not uh, yet been there. Um, we are trying to get our fandom, which, uh, which is a very young fandom. We've been around for about 30, 40 years with average age of 20 something, I think, at this point, uh, to be more involved in the international uh, community. And since we can get all of them to come to WordCon, we're trying to bring WordCon to them. Um, we are aiming for the second week of August in 27 on the, in the uh, Expo Tel Aviv, the Tel Aviv Conference Center. It's a, it has about, six different buildings, but we're looking at two of them that can house a WordCon pretty much of any size. It has a, each one of them has a four to 6,000 square meter a hall and a lot of other breakout rooms that we can use. A, a little light on the office space, but there is ways around that as well. Um, so. That is the basic information if anyone has questions. And How many separate streets of programs do we conveniently have? Um, 
so from our count right now we can probably do about 14 I think breakout rooms if I remember correctly it really depends on what we want to do in a, a, if we want to do our conventions tend to have a lot of role playing in them as well and we're not sure if we want to include role playing or not in the convention yet and if we will then kind of changes the math a bit but uh, it can support if I remember correctly something along those lines okay my turn uh, it's a sort of the elephant in the room question, but um, how would you be addressing security concerns there at the facility in Intel? It'd be obviously there's yeah. current events that would make. Um, okay, so as far as security concerns, obviously with the current situation, we hope the uh, war will be over soon. And obviously if it's not, we won't be able to do the event and we'll have to postpone. Uh, on everyday security concerns, uh, Israel has quite a lot of experience in maintaining uh, secure events. Uh, we recently had the Eurovision a couple of years back in the same facility and it uh, worked great without any hitches, security or otherwise. And given that that facility was able to house the full Eurovision contest, uh, we're pretty confident it can uh, handle a uh, world con. There's a number of countries that would have, Israel would have visa requirements for people to attend from. So mm -hmm. what level of efforts are you going to be able to put into addressing those concerns so that we, the people we, can get easier visas? Um, yeah, we do aim to have, a, to work with the a Department of Interior assuming they don't change the government again and move it to a different department, <laughs> um, uh, on get, uh, working for, to get those visas. But currently, for most European and American countries, there is no visa requirement. Some uh, Far Eastern countries and some African countries require it, but it's usually not an issue uh, to, to acquire those visas once they get like a letter from us that, uh, they're coming to the conference and okay and your committee would be fully supportive of issuing any necessary letters to yeah get visas of course for we won't have uh, yes and do you, do you know just offhand maybe unfair but what like the no percentage would be like I how many do countries not might have that information okay. I mean there are countries that do not have diplomatic relations with Israel Malaysia does not allow its citizens to come to Israel I um, think, well, obviously some of the other Middle East, Eastern countries uh, might have a problem with that. Uh, but in general, any country that has diplomatic relations with Israelis usually doesn't have a problem bring, bringing people in. Um, again, mm -hmm. mostly visa requirements are from the Far East because that's where a lot of our foreign workers come from. So okay. there is... Uh, these issues. Vetting them for visiting versus yeah, looking work. For exactly. Okay. That's uh, pretty right. common for most countries. Well, and the diplomatic relations rule will be helpful, I think, for some people to determine. Is it possible to get a visa? Yeah, I'm not sure. For a lot of those countries, they don't allow their own citizens to visit Israel, so I'm not sure we can do anything about that, unfortunately. Uh, how common would English language fluency be for in, in Israel for people to so deal with? So in, in Tel Aviv, pretty much everyone speaks English. In general, I think English is probably either the first or second spoken language in, in Israel. I'm not sure if it's spoken more or less than Hebrew at this point. Um, our three major languages are Hebrew, English, and Arabic. All major road signs, street signs, everything is in Bo all three languages, uh, most people uh, speak at least two of those languages, uh, English being the one that is usually the second one. Uh, here is a question there's nothing wrong with. I don't think you're going to be able to answer it. This is a business meeting probably. So if you win the bid and then it has to be postponed for security reasons, outbreak of military violence, 
uh, can another location then proceed with the Worldcon? That's going to be a real business meeting question. Yeah, I'm to not sure what, yeah. to be honest, I'm not sure what the business no, no, meeting rules for that are, but yeah. I'm sure, I, I think uh, we explored that in this con and there were some alternatives, but no, I don't remember. No, you're not, it's going to be a business meeting yeah. question, but it was not an unfair, rude question, so it's fine to ask. Um, somebody's got a question about uh, religious observances and closing things on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, how does yeah. Tel Aviv handle doing that? Okay, so Israel uh, has uh, a lot of stuff are closed on the Shabbat. So we are planning to do our convention not over the weekend, but actually probably Monday to Friday or Sunday to Thursday, depends on. Uh, we don't have a problem doing MIMO on the weekend, but since th we don't have, a lot of the public transportation closes down on the Shabbat, uh, we won't be able to bring people in to the convention center, so we would not want to do uh, the convention on those days. But we, we are doing, planning on doing the MIMO on the weekend and the convention itself throughout on the week. Tel Aviv itself is not very observant of religion, so most businesses do open. It's more of the anything that's public domain that is closed on the Shabbat. So public transportation and government facilities are for the most part closed on the Shabbat, but uh, restaurants, hotels, everything, it's, it's open, and there's, especially in Tel Aviv. Good as long as it's not Yom Kippur, everything is open. Again, your second week of August is your proposed uh, Yeah, date. currently we're proposing the second week of, of August. There is actually a eclipse that's supposed to be a week before that that's going to be seen in South Israel and Egypt. So we're, we don't want to kind of, we know a lot of people want to do that and then come to the convention. So that's why we're going with the second week. Scanning, looking for movement. Going once, twice, three times. Thank you, Guy. You're excused. Th thank you. If anyone has any, has any more questions, we're at uh, Hall 4. Brisbane. Hello, I'm Vix. I'm part of the newly resurfaced Brisbane bid for 2028. Um, we do have current dates projected, but we are debating because, of course, there is another eclipse with its path of totality in Sydney, whether we move it closer together so people can see the eclipse and then also come and do a world con. We think that might be quite fun for a lot of people. We're looking at hosting in Brisbane, which is about an hour out of Sydney if you're flying, or a good day's drive if you're driving. Um, it'd take about nine hours to drive up, but you can see some of the wonderful landscape on the way. Um, but definitely pop onto the socials, stop by, tell us about all of the different um, dates that you would like, make your preferences known. We're far out enough that we will listen to anyone who asks. Um, we're working with the Brisbane Convention and Exhibition Center. They're the people who helped us out with the wonderful little um, koalas. They're putting together some really good documentation for us. At the moment, there is one dedicated and attached hotel to the venue, but there are about 230 hotels within two kilometers of the venue, which is about a 10 minute walk. So accommodation shouldn't be an issue. The venue itself won world best exhibition space in 2016 to 2018. So it is fit for purpose. If you have been to Brisbane, um, within the last 20 or 30 years, it is more of a city now. Um, we are growing up a little bit. We are fit for purpose. Uh, Bluey Land will be opening at the end of the year and should still be going strong by the time of the bid. So there's even going to be something to convince the kids it's a good idea. Uh, there are 19 airlines that fly directly into Brisbane. 
Um, a number of these now have direct flights straight into Brisbane. And it takes about two good books to get from anywhere in the world to Brisbane. <laughs> Sit on a plane, read two books, and suddenly you're there. And you are two good books down, so you can buy some more at the con. Um, I am up for any questions. We have a good range of people involved. Our chair is Random, who attended AussieCon 4 in Melbourne. Um, we have tax involved. We have indigenous involvement as well. We have people from Brisbane, people from Sydney, a lot of people from Melbourne. We know Melbourne has had four world cons before. So we thought we'd better not have it in Melbourne again, let's pick somewhere else. But being from Melbourne, there was no way we were going to suggest Sydney for it. <laughs> um, you know, the lines run deep. <laughs> and it's better to have a wider city with some good experience and a wider range of attendees who will be able to come. Um, we're pretty excited by it. I am absolutely here for any questions. Please ask away. I'll start. What in the wide, wide world of sports is Louis Land? Bluey Land. Oh, Bluey Land. Yeah. So there is an anthropomorphic cartoon dog who is a blue healer with uh, very short cartoons that will absolutely make you cry. Children love it. <laughs> Everyone, anybody else with questions? Oh, we have one coming. What's the public transport look like if I'm? Public transport is pretty good. Um, there are definitely buses up there. I know that I and I'm have thinking some like hotel to convention center type stuff if I want to I'm a quarter Within mile away okay. and I step out and I want to quarter mile away there will probably be some buses there is a hotel attached and there are a slew of Ubers and everything else at the moment we also have the less organized public transport and more self propelled we have the lime scooters and the e-bikes available all throughout the city as your green and friendly ways of um, getting around. And how big is the attached hotel? The attached hotel is, I believe, hold like, on. Like rooms, not square feet. I don't know. Uh, we have... Sorry, I have it in here. Hotels, I believe it's over 400 rooms. Yeah, the attached hotel is 400 rooms, but again, 230 hotels within two kilometers distance. Airbnbs, hostels, we can hit all price points on the way down. Pull out my readers here. Then. Long questions. I so like I'll it. Let you go. It is south and across the bridge from the city center. Oh. It's about a ten-minute walk directly into the city. Yeah, so it's in South Bank. Someone apparently from prior. Brisbane experience they were asking is it still standard for the credit card processing transaction fee to be put on the customer side of transactions it really depends what we tend to have is if you spend under a certain amount you will get a 20 cent surcharge which is usually if you spend under ten dollars if you spend over ten dollars there is no surcharge fee No, I see you there, Jonathan Miles. No. All right, give people, we got 
a few minutes so less chances for oh. Is Australia involved in any illegal occupation of any neighboring countries? Are you? Um, Australia is involved in the illegal thing of Australia. Uh, sovereignty has never been ceded. We do not have a treaty with our indigenous population. We are getting indigenous involvement for the bid. Any external countries, not so much, but there are about 200 individual nations um, that make up Indigenous Australia, we are getting their involvement and support in the bid, and we do want to run a very inclusive bid. We will be operating in Brisbane, has the Indigenous name Mianjin, and we will be on the lands of the Turbaral and Yagara people, and we have sought their support for the convention. So nothing external, internally, yeah, a little bit, but we are working with the populations to be as respectful and inviting as we can be. Do you, uh, you startled me there, John. I thought you were gonna shoot up here with a question. I'm like. Yeah. No, any questions? <laughs> um, for the arachnophobes, we tend to keep the spiders outside the events. <laughs> um, conventions are pretty strong. It, I understand people are a little bit terrified of the wildlife, but we have the human population mostly <laughs> under control these days. Um, we will do our best to be a welcoming convention. If there is nothing else. I don't see any other movement, so Vix, thank you very much. All right, that's the first half of the Worldcon Q&A. So you're going to get a little slightly bigger break because 2.30 was the announced start time for the second half, and those bids were told that. So I don't want to short anybody. So you've got 50 minutes or 40 minutes or so if you want to grab lunch or snack or something, and we'll pick up back here at 2.30 sharp.